Hey guys, so here we go. It's a bit continuation, uh, starting at 10-12. Um, continuing to go through and getting everything drilled and clecoed up on the tail cone. Very exciting. So here you see me doing some match drilling along the longer ons there on the uh, both the passenger and uh, pilot side of the airplanes. And the irony there is you're gonna have to do it again. Um, I went ahead and pre-drilled all these like I thought I was supposed to, and I think it even says to, but then once you put the top scans on, you gotta do it again. Uh, and here I'm going through and moving the Clecos, so you know you have to drill on either side of the Cleco, and then you gotta move the Clecos over and drill all those just to make sure you get all of the holes. Tedious. Uh, you'll eventually get good at having a drill in one hand and a, the Cleco pliers in the other, uh, or if you purchase one of those uh, pneumatic Cleco systems, then that might actually make your life easier, I'm not sure, because then it's just a trigger in the right hand and a trigger in the left. But uh, that's what I'm doing here. I'm going through, moving you know, moving the uh, various Clecos over one at a time and then back, going back and drilling. And you know, by the end of this, my hand was tired. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely something to be said about getting those pneumatic Cleco puller. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Uh, you know, it is an expensive piece of equipment, but in the end, you know, if it saves your fingers, why not? I mean, I guess they're not all that expensive. They cost about $60, uh, and it is something that might be very useful, but you're going to have to plumb for it. And if you're using both a pneumatic drill and a the pneumatic Clico pliers, then you're going to have to have a system whereby you have two hoses. Um, so, I mean, it's just, again, it's, it's something you have to plan for if you're going to do it. And so far, I've been able to do everything with the pliers and without, you know, Without too much pain, it, you know. After a while, when you're when you're pulling a thousand clecos, which is what I'm doing here, uh, you know, your hand gets sore. But you got two hands, so yeah, it's all right. Once we get everything back uh, righted and sitting correctly, we have to pull one of the top skins down, and there's a little flap of metal that you'll actually need down the road. So you just saw me cut it off and then deburr the edges where uh, the cuts were not exactly smooth, and uh, put that aside. That will come come into play much later apparently when you're actually connecting the uh, tail cone to the fuselage itself, which that'll be interesting. Hopefully I won't lose that piece of metal. If I do, <laughs> it's easy to replace. Here I'm going through and putting in the top stiffeners, which uh, there are three of those. And again, we're doing the same thing we did the last time. Remember, there's that line that you drew across the, uh, the bottom of the stiffeners that you have to line up in the holes. Here I'm pulling off the bottom of that uh, vinyl. Uh, see how it came off real quick? I'm getting better at that. But now you gotta line up, uh, line up the various bits and get those lines and then, you know, slowly try to uh, put this skin on. And I was noticing I was putting the skin on that that it really wasn't fitting all that well. And I had intentionally skipped the fluting step because I wasn't actually sure if this is something that you needed to do. And yeah, you actually do. It's really weird. I don't know how they figured this out. Uh, you know, math wise, but if you don't flute it, those holes won't match up. If you, you know, if you, if you, if you leave them unfluted, they're off ever so slightly. So somehow they took into account the difference, you know, in the computer between a fluted piece and an unfluted piece, knowing that each person might flute slightly differently. I don't know how they did that. It's magic. Right here, you can see this piece has been fluted using the fluting pliers that I purchased, and it kind of puts a little bulge, and this piece isn't. So, fluting with and without fluting. It's a very minor difference, really. Like I said, I'm not really sure how they calculated that or figured it out. Smarter people than me. So, here we go again, trying to put the top skin back on, and it magically fits now. Uh, pretty cool. At this point, I had not taken, you'll notice, I had not taken the vinyl off the top of the skins or the sides. Uh, I do that later. I go through and I use the, the soldering gun to kind of cut out areas to make it smooth. I don't know if that, I don't think that's going to have any effect on the fitting uh, when you're doing your match drilling like this. I could be wrong, but I mean, it would, the difference would be the thickness of that vinyl, which is just nothing. Um, so I, I'm not sure if leaving the vinyl on like this is a good idea or not. I have been so far and it doesn't seem to have any effect on, on the outcome. So uh, I don't know. Your mileage may vary. Give it a shot either way. Tell me what you think. Every once in a while, you see me going back to the sides and harvesting more of those Clecos. This is what I was talking to you before. You know, I, I have 623 Clecos uh, of those 40 millimeter Clecos. And yeah, you could easily have double that and still run out. I mean, it's one of those things that you need a lot of them. 
And here I'm doing exactly what I had talked about uh, early on, and that's lining up the line on the bottom of the stiffener and drilling the holes uh, through the skin and through the stiffener and then clecoing them up. This is, uh, this is also where I realized that, you know, this is a pain climbing up and down on, on this little step ladder. I need to lower my uh, sawhorses quite a bit so that I could, you know, not have to continually climb up and down that dang ladder. And uh, I don't have a video of me lowering it, but trust me, I do. You'll note at this point, I'm still using my DeWalt drill as opposed to the pneumatic drill. Uh, I do have the pneumatic drill at this point, but I'm using the DeWalt because I'm still trying to sort out how I'm gonna deal with the fact that the pneumatic drill is not air efficient by any stretch of the meaning. And you know, two or three Clecos and the compressor is kicking on and refilling. And I think that's partly because I only have like a three gallon or four gallon compressor. It's just, it's not a real big compressor, a little, little pancake compressor. It works great for the you know amount I use it. I think a pneumatic drill is really meant for like, you know, you've got a 60 gallon compressor, one of those big tall jobbies and I simply don't have one of those, nor do I plan to ever buy one because they're really expensive and I just don't need that, that tooling as much. Uh, so I do kind of go back and forth though between using the pneumatic drill and the DeWalt, uh, probably until the DeWalt dies and well, then I'll get another one. And here I'm working on putting that forward skin on. Uh, remember when you do all the work, uh, you're not going to be doing anything with the uh, 1006 front rib. You're just gonna get everything in place but you're not gonna do uh, any of the uh, dimpling or, or any of that stuff like that. You don't wanna, don't wanna screw that up because that comes much later. And yep, more harvesting of Clecos from the underside, just generally finding more Clecos than, you know, that I can use because I need them. And then we go to the other side and get the uh, skin laying down flat. Works nicely, looks great. Really gives you a sense of scale too. I mean, this is like the back, I don't know, one third of the plane. Uh, pretty cool. But more harvesting. If you are gonna be using a pneumatic drill like this, one thing I would recommend is getting one of those really lightweight hoses. Um, you can get them online. I know Avery in Cleveland and all those other places have them, but so does Home Depot. Uh, I got I got this one at Home Depot. It's a super lightweight hose. It's not real long, uh, about 20 feet, I think. And it's it just makes your life easier. I mean, that, that uh, system is supposed to be lighter anyways, even though that drill's not any lighter than the, pneumatic, uh, the uh, DeWalt I'm using. Having that big, heavy hose come up there definitely adds a lot of weight. So having a lightweight hose like that blue one I've got really makes it easier to use. Uh, and it doesn't tangle. Like they've got some that are coiled. Don't get the coiled ones, those suck. Here I'm going back and, and re-match drilling all of the uh, holes on the longer on and now through the skins. And this is what I said, I, I, I did it earlier and then I was like, ah, oh, I'm gonna have to do this again once I put the skins in and sure enough I did. And here I'm going through and I'm, I'm match drilling under all of the Clecos in the ribs across the top skins. Uh, and then I'll, I'll do all of the other Clecos as well. This is, you know, just another one of those wash, rinse, repeat tasks that you have to do. Uh, as with so often with, you know, building an airplane, it seems like it's a lot of the same thing over and over again, and sure enough it is. And I'm gonna keep saying the same thing over and over again about it because, well, if I had to do it, you gotta listen to it. So this was a Saturday and Sunday. It was uh, Saturday, May the 30th and the 31st. Um, spent a whole bunch of time out in the garage working on this. A little over uh, eight and a half hours in total. And uh, I got a lot done. Uh, I'm not actually, not actually showing everything that I got done in the interest of trying to keep these videos down. I mean, I had said in the last video that I wanted to try to keep these under 10 minutes and here I am at like 13. Um, and that's primarily because, you know, these really long days, there's a lot of video. Um, uh, I go through and I get it fully assembled as you're, as you're watching here. Uh, and then I get it fully disassembled as well and begin the priming process, which I'm not gonna show in this video. I'll show the disassembly and talk to that uh, afterwards. I may not actually make that video at all, to be honest, because really, you just saw me assemble it, then you're gonna watch me disassemble it? What's the point of that? I mean, I could just give you a, a 10 second, super fast collage of that and say, look, it's disassembled, and then just move on to the next video, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Uh, I feel like I'm boring you guys as it is. Right here, I'm working on the 10-13 uh, 
parts. There's several uh, angle attachments that you have to drill a whole bunch of times and get them shaped correctly and put them on the back of the plane. And uh, here I'll move the camera so you can see it. Doink, there you go. Um, and this is, a, this is a prime example of where the pneumatic drill wasn't working for me, and that's why I switched back to the DeWalt, because this particular piece of angle aluminum is real thick, and it was actually just kind of the drill, the pneumatic drill was slowing down to not quite a stop. I mean, it, was, it just wasn't real zippy. And I was like, man, I know I can chew through this a lot faster using the DeWalt. Even though the DeWalt is starting to growl a little, it's not happy with all this drilling. And here, uh, we're beginning the process of match drilling the holes through the longer ons uh, going through the aft deck. Remember I had told you previously that you did not want to do that until it tells you to, and this is where that is. So going through and drilling those, and those longer ons are really thick, so I knew immediately that the pneumatic drill just wasn't going to work there and that I was going to have to use the DeWalt, and that's what's happening here. And you'll notice I didn't just start at one end and zip down the other. I kind of jumped around and then went back uh, and did the in-between holes. Uh, again, that's to avoid a twist. Uh, I'm told by people that have done this a lot, if you start at one end and just drill all the way down to the other end, you will impart a twist into the part, and that is the last thing you want. So uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, I'm taking their advice, and I'm just, if jumping around is something that will possibly remove the chance of an error, then that's what I'm gonna do. Here I'm match drilling those support angles that are on the back, and you can see I've got a couple of those clamp clecos that are holding it to the uh, horizontal stabilizer supports. Those clamp clecos are incredibly useful. I only have uh, 20 of them, 10 of the half inch and 10 of the inch. And you know what? I think that's all you ever need because I, I really never use like th but three or four of them at a time, but when you do need them, they're vital. So I really do uh, recommend getting some of those. They they're just handy. Um, they, they have very specific uses for certain, but yeah, they're, they're nifty to have and they make your life a lot easier. Here I'm going through and removing all the top skins. Uh, this is one of those areas where you're going to remove these because you have to do a little bit more work on the inside. I'm not sure why they didn't have you do this before you put the top skins on, but eh, I just work here. So this is the beginning of 10-14, where uh, you have to work on the shoulder harness anchors, which are just a couple of little bars that you fashion and just click them in place. Yeah, again, I'm not really sure why they waited. Uh, we, you know, this is something you could have done before you put the top skins on, but I mean, those clicos would have been in the way, but either way. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap that up here. Like I said, next time I will probably show you a super fast collage of the disassembly because you don't need a whole video on disassembly. You just watch the assembly, and if you want to see the disassembly, watch it in reverse. Haha. -ha. Um, so there's that. And uh, oh, last little bit here. I'm going through, and you have to remove one of these little triangles of skin, which makes me nervous. So I'm marking it here, and I'll remove it next time. Hey guys, thanks.